What exactly does it entail to be referred to as one of the worst video games in the history of the medium? The gaming community as a whole has concluded that discussing games that exploit your computer's hardware to mine Bitcoin is not worthwhile, even though such a list could easily be populated with Steam asset flips that do so. One may even make the case that they are not games at all. Experts compile review scores from across the internet and produce an average out of 100, which is a significantly superior methodology for determining which video games are the worst of all time. The games with the lowest ratings on this website are the ones that were famous enough that major reviewers sense potential in them, only to have that hope destroyed with some awful titles. Number 10. Infestation Survivor Stories The War Z It should come as no surprise that a game as terrible as this one would try to capitalize on the popularity of zombie shooters in this day and age when the market is saturated with such games. Strangely, this game was quite highly received when it was still in the alpha stage, but the final release version made absolutely no improvements and some fans even believe that it went backward compared to the alpha version. Review excerpts from the book Best Infestation Survival Stories Eurogamer If you're even the slightest bit tempted, just keep in mind that at the heart of the storm lies a game that is extremely simple and ugly, and it was developed by a corporation that is dishonest as well as inept. Number 9. Deal or No Deal The television game show Deal or No Deal is extremely popular, but attempts to adapt it into a video game have never been successful. Because there is no actual money on the line, the gameplay is devoid of any kind of suspense, because the numbers that are being thrown around have no real significance. Despite this, the Deal or No Deal video game for the Wii was a success because in comparison to the DS version, it contains significantly fewer bugs. By continuously placing the money in the same cases when you reboot your machine, it removes completely the random chance from the game, which utterly destroys the purpose of playing Deal or No Deal. Number 8. Alone in the Dark Illumination it's incredibly upsetting to watch a famous horror franchise like Alone in the Dark go down the drain, but it's difficult to argue otherwise considering what a fiasco this game turned out to be given how it came out. This game made the inexplicable decision to support up to four-player co-op and to center gameplay on remaining in the light to avoid danger. As a result, you are neither playing alone nor in the shadows when you play this game. Even if it wasn't enough to sink it, the fact that it was released in a partially broken state did. Number 7. The SPOGS Racing Team to answer the question that I'm sure you just asked, ASPOG is an abbreviation for a sports player object gyro, and if it makes sense to you, then I can only assume that you were involved in the development of the game. It was a conventional rip-off of Mario Kart, which was not uncommon in the 2000s, but this one managed to be very poor with ugly visuals and some of the worst racing ag that is currently available. Number 6. Double Dragon Hu, Wander of the Dragons Double Dragon Hu. Wander of the Dragons may be the absolute worst beat-em-up brawler that's ever been produced and it does so by dredging up a great franchise once again. Not only do the visuals seem terrible by the standards of 2013, but the game also had trouble running at anything even remotely close to an acceptable frame rate. When things were going well, combat was exceedingly boring. When things were going poorly, it was impossible because attackers could constantly group up on you and overwhelm you. Number 5. Vroom in the Night Sky this game was included in the debut lineup of the Nindy section of the Switch eShop and its inclusion was important of the large amount of shovelware that was to follow. Visually, it was inferior to the games available for the Nintendo DS and in terms of playability, it was inferior to anything else. It was similar to Superman 64 in that you had to play through countless rings, but this time you did so on a ridiculously slow and very loud motorcycle. Number 4. Leisure Suit Larry – Box Office Flop this game would have fit in well with any of the terrible movie tie-in action platformers that the previous generation was known for being famous for. This was just a boring experience from beginning to end, just like the majority of those other games. The original game's more sophisticated sexual humor was thrown out the window in favor of trashy gags that were frequently sexist and unfunny. This was done in the name of satire. It was undeniable evidence that games of this nature were no longer desired by the target audience. Number 3. Yaris that's right, we're talking about the Toyota Yaris here. What would you think of a game in which the only vehicle you can drive is a hot hatchback, even though everyone loves the excitement of racing games because you can race across courses in supercars and hypercars to your heart's content? The gameplay is quite similar to that of the special stages in Sonic 2, except now you will be able to fire lasers from your vehicle thanks to something called a Mechana Symbion. The game features two-player multiplayer, both on the same machine and on Xbox Live. The players can simultaneously help and hinder each other with various auras that occur when the cars are close to one another. Pressing each of the four controller buttons has a different effect, Yaris is indeed a free game. 
but it shouldn't serve as an excuse for putting any effort into the whole experience. Yaris, however, does not possess any traits that may be considered redeemable. Number 2. Ride to Hell Retribution The game was met with largely negative reviews. Even though it is well known to be a poor game Ride to Hell, Retribution does not hold the record for being Metacritic's lowest rated game ever. Even though it has hilarious bicycle gameplay and monotonous on-foot combat, as well as a story that doesn't make any sense and repeated fully clothed sex scenes that will have you rolling your eyes for days, it deserves to be in second place. My protagonist, who is covered in tattoos, was forcibly thrown off his turret gun before the game had even finished displaying the fundamental controls on screen. The game went right into a sequence that was traditional of turret guns. The game has been criticized by reviewers for having broken and repetitive gameplay, poor controls, dated graphics, poor voice acting and writing, poor artificial intelligence, numerous bugs and glitches, excessive use of quick-time events, awkward sex scenes with the characters fully clothed, and a negative portrayal of women. Number 1. A celebration for the entire family with 30 fun games Obstacle Arcade The Wii was rife with compilation party games, some of which were among the finest WAG games, Yet none of them managed to be nearly as terrible as this offering on the Wii U. The Wii was full with party games, some of which were among the best Wii games. Not only did it have horrible controls, but to play it, you also had to own two Wii modes and two nunchucks. This was a significant inconvenience. Visually, it might be embarrassed by a game for the PlayStation 2, and it doesn't even work properly half the time. Family Party 30 Amazing Games Obstacle Arcade is a terrible game that is as cumbersome and poorly thought out as its title. This noisy, screeching, clattering monstrosity has absolutely no redeeming qualities whatsoever, as it is wholly dependent on the shallow and repetitious waggle that ought to have perished along with Y. There is simply no reason to suggest this. It's the worst kind of mindless entertainment there is, but on the bright side, it might be the best method to break your kid's growing addiction to video games. How was the video? Do you like it? Post your precious feedback in our comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.